Morning. We're up at HQ today. Got a uh, new machine to PDI. So we're we'll going to get a look. DX27. Big diggers today. Big Fox 20 look. Look at that beast. That's probably my machine now that I'm PDIing. <laughs> That is some bit of gear, that look. What's this one next to it? Look at the cleats on that. That's a 422, two 420s. Wonder if that's came from Korea. <laughs> yeah, look at that. 23 plate, brand spanker. Right, um, stock number. Where do I see that? I said it was over by the fence and there's only 127 so it's got to be this one hasn't it? Right we're going to put this in the workshop. Oh and welcome back to the channel and if you haven't already click the subscribe button. Videos every Tuesday night, Thursday night and Saturday evening, early afternoon, late afternoon ish usually. Um, yeah we're gonna uh, PDI some diggers today this one be finished well it's half ten just now Um I went up to Dumfries yard and dropped some parts off and I had to get those parts from Carlisle and another spot so done a bit of running around this morning we'll get this machine PDI we should have it done just after lunch and then we'll see what else there is to do so I'm just uh, setting these hammer pipes up it's going with a hammer so putting the quick couplers on uh, I've just kicked it out ever so slightly so that you don't scalp your knuckles off that corner there. Also just kicking the hammer pipe work in slightly just so it sits a bit neater. I'm gonna kick that rotate line in slightly too um, just to try and keep it running neat. Um, be able to do a little bit with that one there but just sort of keep it all slim line. It's almost see the difference there. I'm not quite finished but um, and I'll have some hitch hoses made up by then, I'll get the hitch hung off it and then after that it'll just be a case of greasing it up, checking out levels there we go, I think you'll agree that's much neater you don't want the hoses sticking away out here if you're digging up against a hedge or a tree you don't want to hank a hose and have a bad day so I'll take this cap off here, put the quick coupler on this side the other thing is to get quick couplers on the rotate lines. So I've got the covers off both the lock valves. Um, I've mentioned this in a few videos before, so I'm sorry if you've already seen those videos, but any new viewers, the oil that opens this lock valve to unlock it just shuttles backwards and forwards. So if there's any air pockets in this pipe, then the air will compress. So when you go to use one of these functions on the dipper arm or the boom up, then it'll be a sort of nothing, 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 and then everything, because the oil's pushing, 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 and squeezing, squeezing, squeezing the air pocket, and then it's unlocking the valve. So we'll just crack these fittings and press the boom down, push the boom down until we've got oil coming out of here. Quite often there's um, a bit of air in these lock valves and it just improves the feel of the machine when you're working it so we'll just crack that off just on idle push the boom down until we've got a solid flow of oil and uh, the same with the dipper arm only we're gonna draw the dipper arm in there's a little bit of air in this one up here there wasn't anything in the lock valve down there would it be enough for you to notice it while you were working it? Probably not, but the one machine that you don't do, because the last six that you've done have been fine, the one machine that you don't do, you'll guarantee it'll be two hours away and the fella's saying, oh, it's really jerky or juddery when you just try to do fine movements. Um, and you have to go all the way out there, crack that off, get him to draw the dipper arm in lock it back off again try that oh that's much better what have you done <laughs> so it's just better to be in the habit of doing it and then it's done i know the old shape dx 85s and 62s and um, they were bad at having a lot of air in the system and uh, they would be quite 
quite jerky like so yeah that's that little job done um i'll go and see if my pipes are made right we'll check final drive gearbox oils stand back because there'll probably be a bit of air pressure in here too bad oil level is perfect again it's a one of them the one that you don't check they'll have no gearbox oil it'll do 100 hours gearbox will fall apart and we'll be wondering why i like those hubs <laughs> it doesn't matter what position it's in the middle is the level do the other side let's have a quick look at engine oil spot on that i'll just double check I'm gonna wipe it on my trousers a lot, but it's a fresh on, fresh on boiler suit, so I better not. Spot on. Good. And check coolant level. Full. Uh, there's no point doing hydraulic oil level till I've got the hitch on, and the hitch pipes have just been dropped off to me. Crack this off. Oh, that one's tight. Ooh, hell, fire. Have a look. Perfect. No screen washing this one. So we'll keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't run back out as fast as I'm pouring it in. Seems all right, there's no, no dribbles. Right, we're after lunch. I'm just gonna offer this hitch up now. I've got the pipes fitted up. Um, it's always easy to put the pipes on with the hitch off. So we'll, uh, we'll get it put on. I'll just go and check that there's any rubber seals to go in here actually. Right, we're getting there. Just, we'll do the, I need to press that button too, hang on. Check the hitch works. And, Good, right, what I'll do next is um, stop this beeping noise. Uh, I'll put the hammer on it, I'll find a quite a little spot in the yard, just make sure the hammer works, check all the buckets fit, give it a grease up, and that'll be finished. Okay, right, I'll make sure the ram, the rammer, I was gonna call it a rammer, the hammer, hammer works. Grand. I don't want to go too deep because there's probably a massive electric cable under there knowing my look so it works it fires it's not a good idea to fire a hammer into fresh air that's what i was always told find a block a good decent chunk of wood or something like that fire it into that but you should never fire a hammer into fresh air right grease it up check the levels now i've got the hitch on it and i've tried the hammer out now we'll get a true level check Right, that's the machine finished. All that's left to do with that now is wash it down, and that isn't the job for me. There's a fella here that does it all day long. So that's nice, I don't need to wash it. Um, so yeah, so the machine released into the wild. Uh, I thought that was a scratch, but it's not, it's just muck. Um, so yeah, I'll probably, what am I doing tomorrow? 4.20 again tomorrow, DX 4.20 we've got bit of work to do to that and then I'll load up the van for that so I can go to it in the morning and uh, probably help somebody else out for the last couple of hours of the day. Morning, it's Friday at last, back at this big digger today, DX420. Um, yeah, reading the comments from the last video there this morning when I was having my breakfast, a lot of you like to see the big machines. Um, I'd like to show more big machinery work, but uh, it's just what I get up to during my working week and sort of in Cumbria and the borders, it's generally forestry or agriculture and building sites that the machines are working on. Um, a lot of these big machines go up into what we call the central belt, which is around Glasgow and Edinburgh, um, and on the big quarries sort of up in that direction. So I don't often get to sort of put my hands on them, so to speak. Um, and as you saw up in the yard yesterday, there's a couple of brand new 
uh, 420s sat ready to go as well. So we do put big machines out there. It's not all mini diggers and 14 tonners. Um, and I know a lot of you like to see the big machines, but uh, I can only show you what I get up to. I can't just go finding machines just for the sake of it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've, um, I was on Instagram and uh, Regatta Workwear approached me and said, would I like some new outfits? <laughs> so I've got this nice uh, Regatta Workwear top and some trousers look. So I've never, uh, never had any Regatta Workwear stuff. It's always been what's been supplied or um, that sort of a thing. So anyway, I'll be trying out these uh, trousers. I'll probably have to take this jacket off because it's, oh, it's so warm. And I said to the wife before I left the house, it's almost too good to wear to work. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, we'll see how these trousers get on anyway. I'm quite particular with uh, work trousers. I like to have plenty of movement and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, we'll give them a, give them a, give them a go today and uh, get them through the wash and try them next week as well. Right, I'm gonna get a boiler suit on, take this nice fleecy jacket off. Um, it's probably not cold enough to wear, but oh, it's so nice. It really is. Um, yeah, let's get on. So this DX420-5, what we're gonna do on it today, um, I'm gonna give Dave a hand to put the um, track rollers on it. Those track rollers are about 30 kilos each, they're flipping heavy. So we're gonna get a machine to offer them up. Um, I've got the knock sensor to go in the exhaust and we also need to pull the EGR cooler off and clean it. Um, apparently it's got historic faults for uh, a restriction through the EGR valve. Uh, yeah, it's a restriction through the EGR cooler, so we'll get that sorted. Um, and that should be the day put in by the time we've got these on. We've got all the holes drilled out. Apart from that one there. Dave, you've missed one look. <laughs> oh, is that for the trap guide? That's for the trap guide, I think. Right, I've commandeered a little vehicle to lift these track rollers up. What a nice little vehicle it is too. It's a Develon DL08 or 80. Can't remember, but I'll show you around it. It's, it's a lovely little thing. The only criticism I've got for this particular job, I suppose if we slid the forks over to one side of the carriage, I'd see better, but at the moment I can't see anything <laughs> because of the boom. Hey, it's an 80 TL. Must have a hell of an oil flow on it. Look at the size of these pipes here. They're running like, I don't know, a bedder or a brush. Hell of a bit of kit. We've just had the Milwaukee gun and the Mac Tools gun having a battle. And the winner was... Milwaukee. Right, it's the last roller that's going on this, and then I can get on with what I came here to do. It's raining now. It is. Hard work doing these track rollers. I like to do it every day. Got me oven bright. Clean up my EGR, EGR cooler. That is miserable. Right, lunch is nearly had. Fetch some cookies back for the boys. And um got my wetsuit on <laughs> for the first time in six months. Climb up onto that bonnet and let's get this EGR cooler out, eh? So we've got high vis grab rails getting fitted and uh, I need to take this EGR cooler off. Oh I didn't fetch an Allen key. Go and grab an Allen key, but this should all come off. We'll cap that with these rubber bungs because this is coolant in here, coolant here. I've never taken one of these off, I don't think, but it's a lot handier to get on uh, to than the shovels. This engine would normally be in a 420 shovel, so yes, yeah, nice to be on top of it. There we go. Just me on my own now. I was going to have company for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've got the EGR cooler removed. That is what it looks like. 
Um, what is EGR cooler? EGR stands for exhaust gas recirculation. So a proportion of the um, exhaust gas, so this is the exhaust manifold, comes through into here. This is the EGR valve. So at the moment you can see it's shut. So therefore there's no exhaust gas coming through the cooler and into the inlet manifold. Um, that's just falling off there. I must keep an eye on that. Um, so, as the machine's running and it's getting hot, it'll open the exhaust but exhaust EGR valve, and it will allow, or it'll divert exhaust gas back into the inlet side, and that is to reduce NOx. Um, yeah, so it's, the, the machine is can recycle its emissions, which, as you can see, that is the mixer tube that mixes it up as it goes into here. And just look at the state of that. So that's the machine is breathing its own filth. So that's to get cleaned up. And so is the yeah, cooler, which isn't too bad. Quite often, what you see is it all furred up inside there, and uh, it's you know really, really blocked. This isn't too bad, which you'd expect for a machine like this because you buy a big 42 ton digger to work hard, don't you? Sort of this one's been in a quarry, so it's been digging stone, working hard. Um, you get a lot of problems with the EGR on machines that just do light work and you know everything kind of gets choked up so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to blank that end off down there I'm going to fill it with oven pride and let it sit for an hour or so I'll take it over to the pressure washer and hot wash it all out and uh, put it back on while it's sort of smothered in oven pride I'll get the knock sensor done they've also brought me a pilot accumulator and a new lock valve for the dipper arm but I can't do the dipper arm now because I didn't realize I was doing that today I can't do that because I've already got this all undone um, so we'll have to do the dipper, uh, dipper valve right at the end so we've got some of this liquid pour it into here and that'll just do its thing Probably use a second. Oh, is it filling up? Oh, lovely. I'll maybe give it a second one. Sent us down with three. <laughs> maybe save one for my cooker at home, look. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what I will do. I'll, the third one, I'll fill another one, I'll fill one of them up and I'll put that mixer tube Leave it to soak. Nasty stuff like. Nasty stuff. Right, I'll get me a second hand to peel that tamper proof cover off. So there's the before and we'll do an after. Uh, in an hour's time we'll come back and like I say I'll go to the wash bay and wash all that off. It'd be remarkable the difference, won't it? And so for my next trick, next job, is uh, replace that Nox sensor. There it is in there, look. Downstream one. It's the one like. I just had a bit of a kind of oh no moment because I'm used to the Perkins ones where you've got a grey lead which is the upstream and a light grey for the downstream which suggests grey dark grey being dirty and light grey being clean and so therefore downstream is clean which should be a light grey upstream should be dirty which is a dark grey this one's a dark grey but it definitely says in the box look it's in the box yeah downstream so I'll put this one on it but it's a good day for ducks look <laughs> a miserable day um, that's the new sensor installed into there 
Uh, I'll get that exhaust cover back on it in a second. Comes down. Onto there. Let's see it plugged in. So that's that. That's the upstream sensor, which actually is a light grey wire. <laughs> so looks like on the scanners it's the other way around, which I'll need to remember. Will I need to remember? I don't know. Don't know anymore. I just don't know anymore. Um, next job I'm going to do is the pilot accumulator. I'd like to put on, a, like I'd like to put a bit of a time lapse on, or you know, I'd do a leave leave the camera rolling. But in this weather, I'm just trying to keep my phone as dry as I can. I should also point out anybody wondering why I've just changed that knock sensor and they haven't seen Thursday's video. That's why it's because it is separated. I um, don't know what the story is with it, but that exhaust cover wasn't on the machine when it came back or for whatever reason, I think that exhaust covers came away and damaged that sensor or whatever's happened anyway. That's the reason why I'm changing it. It's got an engine management light on the screen and it says that the uh, downstream knock sensor is failing to communicate on CAN. And that'll be why. Right then, uh, next is this little chappy here. It's the exact same part number, exact same part on a 140 as it is on a 420. Um, when I changed that accumulator on the last time I changed it, um, someone was asking if the accumulator was big enough for that size of machine. And it's the same accumulator on a 420. Um, it's just wear and tear. You've just got a little rubber diaphragm in there just taking a not a lot of abuse but it's you know it is what it is is what i'm saying and um, they're not a very expensive part they're easily changed so it's not not sort of the end of the world um there's more boxes in here than i expected <laughs> uh hope all these aren't for me machine oh these are just machine decals yeah, they're not for me. Just this and this. Oh, that's gonna be some lump to change. I'm not looking forward to that if I'm honest with you. Last time I did one of them on a big digger. Is it a 380? 380. Oh, it went with a bang. It went with a bang, it did. And I thought I'd done everything properly to avoid a big bang. Um, but yeah, I'll tackle that anyway at the end of the day. Get this nice new one to pop into here. Filthy in here, look. See when these machines are sat loading a crusher or something and there's just a fine dust. What a mess it makes. I mean, look at these radiators, look. <laughs> They're gonna need a right good swill out, aren't they? I think it's had a new, what's that one there? Not an intercooler. No intercoolers at the top. A new, a new, it's had a new radiator look. Yeah, radiator that one. I'm sure. Mm. Yeah, right, I need to get a 30 mil spanner, I think. Yeah. 30 mil spanner and a pick. And just hope that that's gonna come off without a fight. It's just at the wrong level to get a spanner in nicely. I'll have a go look. Well, I expected a fight, but uh, that wasn't too bad look. I better clean off around here before I go any further look. Oh, Lord. What a treat. Should have done that first bit of brake cleaner. I'm going to get some brake cleaner. There we go. That's that done. Um, what I will do now is... I mean, it hasn't quite been an hour, but it's three o'clock and... That'll be an hour's work up there doing that. But, um, watching me, Bob. I'll have. Oh, look at that. Yeah, a lovely job. Oh, it has a nice. Oh, it's softened that lovely look. Yeah, I'll go and wash these out. Um, you know, an hour, an hour plus is good. 
but uh, to soften that treat and there's a really good pressure washer here so I've got no doubt that we'll be able to get that nice and cleaned out that'll be to pressure wash out and then blow out with an airline we want it we don't want it we, well, we don't want any moisture in there really because obviously that's going into the inlet side so and um, we need to get that cleaned right out um, before we can start it to then lift the arm up and drop the arm down if it had known that that lock valve was to do today then i would have set the machine up accordingly but never mind so that's the after lovely and clean marvelous even down there look and hopefully you'll be able to see through the egr now look whereas before couldn't see through it i've been that took about oh what was that 20 minutes or so of just running hot water through it before it the water ran clean um, and then I've been using the compressor for the last mm, 15 minutes or so, 20 minutes or so, blowing all the moisture out of it. So I'm just, that's, that's sort of like, I've been blowing it into there and then I was blowing it onto here. Uh, so I know it's sort of clean and dry. Oh, I'll tell you what, this weather's, Better get used to it, I suppose. Right, I'll um, climb back up top and put this all back together. I'll tell you what as well, this is a lot lighter now than it was earlier. There we go, all back together. Good. Whew. Right, I need to fire it up and stretch the dipper arm out. Wasn't gonna, but I'm gonna. Should really be packing up and heading home now but it'll if i do this right it'll just be a half hour job oh tell you what when that dipper arms next to my van if there's any oil spilt it will go up in the air and under the van right we'll persevere come on let's get on with it there's no point looking at it Hi, right, I was literally about to set to doing the, the, the lock file, but uh, my, my better half's been on the phone and uh, I'm needed back at home, she's a bit run down and looking after the kids and whatnot. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pack up because it's 45 minutes an hour and uh, she just wants to go to bed, bless her. So I'll, uh, I will, I'll, 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 I'll tidy up and go home and I don't need any more persuasion in this weather. In fact, what I'm going to do just really quickly, I'm going to put a bolt in there because I've just spotted it. And if I don't do that, someone else might not spot it. And I'm sure I've, yeah, there it is. I've seen that and I'm going to do it just in case, just really quickly. Put this bolt in up there right i'll round the video up like that for today um we'll see what it amounts to i hope you've enjoyed it and uh i'll be back at this on monday morning and hopefully hopefully it's not raining see you in the next one